Our next video focuses on combat. This is where we move into the combat side of our combat and survival guide. And this is all about defense, which I will say fundamentally is critical to being able to beat this game, particularly bosses. So with that, the number one way to be great at defense, blocking, avoiding, etc., is to scout. So what I mean by this is as you go through levels, focus on, okay, what kind of enemy, there are about eight different kinds, maybe closer to 10 different kinds of fighters. So every time you're fighting them, you should be scouting, getting their timing down. When's the best, what's the best move and when's the best time to do that avoid that opens up a vulnerability window for you to punish them. So just remember early on, you should be spending a lot of time scouting, not worrying too much about dying or progressing. The goal here is to figure out how to beat each kind of enemy. And that is the number one thing I can tell you that will help you with your defense and surviving and combat in general is knowing your enemy inside and out. Really important too to understand how structure works when it comes to defense. So structure is the bar at the bottom of your screen that when it gets maxed out, you're vulnerable to attack. You can't defend yourself. Now, what increases or maxes your structure out and builds it towards breaking are devastating attacks and different kinds of attacks while you're in guard or blocking with L1 on PS5. Those devastating attacks when their feet and fists are light up, those can have a huge impact and weaken your structure quite a bit. And yes, you are vulnerable when it breaks. So when it maxes out, you're likely to fall down or be disoriented and they're gonna do a lot of damage. You can upgrade your structure at a shrine. I don't typically encourage it because mostly what you're gonna do when listening to my tips and most other people's as well is avoiding. So you're just gonna not be in guard, not blocking. Oftentimes you're gonna be avoiding attacks and that's best for preventing structure from getting too high or breaking. A couple other quick things about structure, y'all, is one, a bottle thrown to your face is gonna instantly break your structure and leave you vulnerable. So good to get that skill that lets you catch bottles um, or otherwise just press R2 and dodge. Next is running and attacking doesn't decrease your structure. So you can run away. This is particularly important with the museum boss. Um, your structure is not gonna go down. So you need to kind of be still or avoiding for your structure to go down. Next, we're gonna talk about the different ways you can defend yourself and when are they good for. So number one is blocking. There are some really good reasons to block, but just remember that blocking is gonna be the number one thing that weakens your structure and eventually breaks your structure. But blocking is just holding L1 or guard on the PS5 and the strikes landing but not doing damage but typically again your structure is going to weaken and break pretty quickly if you're relying on this so if that's the case when is it good to block so i do a lot of blocking when i'm scouting when i'm studying a fighter for the first time trying to figure out their moves because i know my structure is going to break but they're not just going to do so much damage i'm not as vulnerable if i'm trying to do a, a parry or deflect or avoiding which we'll talk about so really good to just hold that l1 to learn their moves without dying very very quickly i also really like to block if it's an unfamiliar attack like i'm playing this person this fighter for like the sixth time and here's this attack i don't think i've seen before i just hold l1 and don't let go till it's over next is sweeps you probably know by now that sweeps from enemies are really hard to predict find see and they almost always knock you on your butt but if you're holding l1 even a sweep isn't gonna knock you down. So good to hold L1, particularly with those enemies that sweep a lot and you're not sure what to do. It's also really good to block the first few moves of a combo while you set up an avoid or perfect parry. So you can see in the next couple videos that the fighter I'm up against, they kind of have these patterns and it can be a little tougher to get the avoids or perfect parries early on, but they always finish with a particular move that's a lot easier to perfect parry. So I'll block the first two or three moves of the combo I know from the fighter, and then I know that last move, there's a little bit of a delay. And so I'm just blocking until that last move, and then I'll do the avoid or perfect parry to set up that window of vulnerability where I can punish them. 
the next way to effectively defend yourself is to deflect or perfect parry. The game calls it calls it deflect, but I know a lot of other games call it the perfect parry. This is when you hit L1 at just the right minute to open up that vulnerability window where you can punish them. I will say I don't love the perfect parry. This game, of a lot of games I found, is hardest to get the right timing. It happens sort of organically when I'm in big groups, but I actually find this timing to get tough. So that's why I prefer avoiding or blocking until a perfect avoid, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the question then becomes, when is deflect best? Is it ever good to use since the timing's so tough and if you miss the timing, you're, you're gonna get punished? Well, big groups, I think you'll find that you're sort of doing this quite organically. And if you mess it up a little bit, you're not up against the toughest guys who do the most damage. So you're just gonna take maybe a shot or two. So big groups are good. Also, when you see the attack coming from a million miles away. So you could see that guy, I saw him sneaking up on me. They typically have a move where they really wind up like that. Sometimes you can perfect parry those or when you just know the pattern really, really well. So next is that, yeah, block until the perfect opportunity to deflect. So you're just gonna hold L1 until that move is coming where you really have the timing down. And then you're going to let go of L1 and tap it really quickly. So when you know an, uh, an enemy really well and you know their combos, you're going to find there's a move that you have the timing just right to deflect slash perfect parry. Next, I want to talk about the mother of all and the best of all defensive strategies, which is avoiding or defensive techniques, really, which is holding the guard button L1 and just moving the joystick um, out of the way of the attack. So I'm going to talk more about how to do that. but you're, and you'll get so good at this once you, as you get better at facing Sean, but it really is the best and go-to for a couple reasons. One is because you have to be good, but not perfect. So your timing doesn't have to be as good as a deflection slash perfect parry, which is really nice. There are a couple moves like when these big guys try and pick you up or takedowns like that, where you do have to be timed right and some bosses need to be timed quite right. But I just find that avoiding is pretty forgiving as it opens up those vulnerability windows. So yeah, that's why it's my go-to. It also doesn't increase structure if you're doing it right. And if you mess up, you're just gonna be in guard or, or blocking anyway with L1. So you're just not gonna take a lot of damage. Your structure's not gonna break very easily. It really is the best way to go. So there is avoiding high and low, and there is avoiding side to side. Now this is a little confusing, so stick with me. It's not confusing to do, it's just confusing to describe. So when you avoid high, I mean that there's a high attack coming. There's an attack coming towards your head. So when that happens, you're holding L1 and pressing down to duck. So the way I like to think of it is I'm either ducking by pressing down or picking my leg up to avoid a sweep by flicking the joystick up. So down to duck, up to like lift your leg and prevent a sweep. So that's avoiding high and low. Brings us to avoiding side to side. So this would be attacks that are sort of coming vertically or up and down on you. And you're going to be holding L1 or the guard button and moving side to side as those very vertical sort of straightforward up and down attacks come that can't at all be confused for high and low attacks. So again, you kind of have these horizontal attacks you're doing up and down and vertical attacks you're doing side to side important point here is like I said this is avoiding is pretty forgiving sometimes I find that if it's not a sweep attack if I'm just ducking I'll get a lot of sort of perfect avoids which is when you avoid typically the last move in a combo and a vulnerability opens up where you can punish them so like I said it's just kind of forgiving so I do a lot of ducking a little side to side and then if I see a sweep coming a mile away I'll uh, lift my leg up or L1 and up. But again, if you're guarding and not letting go of that L1 button while you're doing this, even if you mess it up, you're still not likely to take a lot of damage. I've referred to these vulnerability windows, which is just what I call them, which is when you avoid at the right time, typically at the end of a combo or with a big devastating move coming your way, you're gonna open up, you're gonna sort of slow down time and notice that these windows open up where your the fighter you're up against is not um, guarding or protected or they're vulnerable you just get to take them down get a couple moves in or a combo so the way you do this and the best way to do this again number one know thy enemy know their patterns their combos so you can 
figure out what combo this is pretty quickly and know that when that last move is coming, if you just have to get the avoid pretty good, and then that window will open up and you'll be able to punish them. Sometimes you can avoid and punish mid combo, but I find it's easier to just wait until that last move, typically a devastating move, and avoid, open up that vulnerable vulnerability window and punish them. The next defensive move that definitely has its place is dodge or R2 on the PS5. This is really kind of a scoot. It's just sort of scooting out, scooting away, making space, and making space is really important. So what is dodge good for? And if you hold R2, it's run. Uh, dodge and running is good to get away for structure. So you run, make a little space. Remember your structure doesn't go away or, or rebuild basically. When you're running, you just need to run far enough away to give yourself a little break and let your structure regain. It's also good for making space to re-engage, particularly as you're scouting an enemy. Just kind of like making some space between you and them so you're not, you don't have your back up against the wall. They're not like right on top of you and you're able to see the attack from a, with a little bit of space. And just give your room oh, yourself a little room for a breather so that you can um, get back into rhythm, get back of the flow of the combat. And yeah, so just making space. Now let's talk about getting up and recovering. So when your structure breaks or when they land a devastating blow, you're going to need to recover and get up as fast as possible. It's very important to not take further damage. So the best way to do it, or what I should say is the best way early on and really kind of one of the only ways is to press R2 to roll away. So when you get knocked down, you just press R2 and a direction and you'll roll away. And this is important against the enemies that kind of pound or ground and pound after they knock you down, like Sean and some of those big guys. Next is ground counter. This is where you press L1 after you've been knocked to the ground. And I'll tell you, this doesn't work very often with most enemies, but man, does it work with Sean. He has that really bad sweep move in the second phase that he has and you can ground counter him almost every time with that. Another way to recover that I haven't quite perfected is the pushback cancel. This is where you kind of get kicked back or pushed back and you press L1. I just find that this move actually doesn't cancel the pushback soon enough, so it's not my favorite. Now, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. Sometimes I think about what you've what I've gone through so far as just preventing damage and being really good at avoiding and parrying which is great, but sometimes you just need to interrupt um, damage by doing damage to them. And I sort of think of this as strike first, strike hard, He's no mercy, me. which if you watch Karate Kid is oh, Cobra dude. Kai's motto. Um, and everything up to this point has been more Miyagi-Do. But either way, not super important. What is important is you can absolutely interrupt combos, get the jump on guys, um, and prevent damage by attacking. So you'll see some combos on your screen where they're coming at me and I'm using a weapon or a light attack to interrupt that combo while it's coming. So again, it's just a way to be mindful that particularly with big groups or some enemies, you can. there are particular points where you can kind of interrupt their combo. So it can be really good to do some avoiding, yes, but when you see their attack coming, like you can see that charge back fist, like, those can really help with defense as well because you're on the attack, you're doing damage, and of course the best defense is when everyone's taken down and you're not doing any more damage. So offense can help with defense. When it comes to this idea of offense is the best defense in some instances, another aspect of this is being able to create space and time. So when you're defending, you've got a lot of guys coming at you it's good to know how to sweep how to do these stuns or semi stuns and i talk more about that in the next video but you want to be able to identify those moves that push guys back that sweep them that get them out of your hair for a couple seconds so you can focus and take down another guy and then refocus on them so make sure to get sweep stuns and pushbacks down also note that during a takedown you're invulnerable or i've seen maybe once or twice where i've got hit during a takedown but generally when you're doing a takedown, you're not going to take damage. So if there's a lot of guys attacking you at once and you're able to squeak in a takedown, that will give you a little bit of a break. This, and this really brings me to the tip I have with defense, which is practice patience, which is the my word for the combination of creating space so that you can reset and get in your rhythm, but also patience where you're good at avoid and blocking to the point where I mean, this is just the opposite of button mashing. You're scouting your enemies, you're creating space, and you're being patient 
to get the attacks in when they make most sense. So practice this patience again. This is going to come with more runs, more time, more um, scouting of enemies. So let's talk now about guarding against weapons, which isn't terribly different from, you know, general avoiding guard strategy, which I've outlined so far. But weapons do do a lot of damage to you, so you want to be really effective at guarding against them. And the number way one, the number one way to do that is disarming, um, to get that weapon out of their hands so that you can then take them on while with their own weapon or the weapon you have. So some ways to disarm are sweep. Sweep is probably the easiest way to disarm, particularly against just sort of those average, um, most common guys um, who are pretty vulnerable to sweeps, but that will disarm them. But so will, so does pushing them back and kicking them back. So uh, that's down up square, that will disarm them as well. So will any roundhouse or hook kick. Those all disarm enemies. Until you get to that disarm place or as you're working up to the best moment to disarm them, Avoiding is still your best bet. It's just the number one go-to, like I said. So whether they have a knife, they have a um, staff, whatever it is, if you're the better you are at avoiding, the better you are at defending against anyone, including fighters with weapons. As far as I can tell, ex tell except for the boss in the museum, you can still block weapons, even knives and blades. It will come at a big cost to your structure, but it won't do damage. Again, the exception to this is the boss at the museum. All right, moving on to our next and very important tips are uh, defending against bosses, bosses, which has been a huge issue for everyone I know, like the YouTube videos on how to beat Sean are, are huge and I'll have my own tutorial soon, but let's go over some ways to defend against bosses. So my number one defense tip still applies you should scout, do a lot of scouting, go up against the boss a lot. Um, typically I say don't take shortcuts, like get the XP from going through it, but go against the boss a number of times and be okay with dying. The game is designed for you to die quite a bit. Um, and if you go in knowing that's gonna happen and with the goal of just being like, hey, I'm going to really work hard to understand this guy's moves so that I can get the better of him, dying won't be quite as devastating, frustrating, or anger inducing so you're going in trying to master the avoid and recognize the pattern so you can avoid at just the right moment on these predictable patterns open up that vulnerability window and then punish them generally i would say another tip is to be defense oriented against bosses if it's a big group or normal gods i'm very aggressive but with bosses i'm very defensive like i'm very much trying to find the pattern I like that's the best to get that perfect avoid and open up that window. So go into bosses, whether you're scouting or trying to uh, knock them out and beat them with this idea that I'm gonna be defense and patient oriented and wait for that opportunity to counter and punish. Naturally, with that last tip, we kind of arrive at this place of asking the question of generally, should I be more defensive in my approach to Stifu or should I be more aggressive? Now, the number one response to this is don't button mash. I know that's like a well-documented tip with this game, but button mashing is going to kill you so fast. You need to get good at knowing the moves and being very good with your attacks and your defense. So my biggest tip here is that, again, with bosses, you want to be defensive. You want to go in, um, learn their moves, and be really good at identifying the patterns to then attack um, when you do that perfect avoid. But with big groups, you want to be aggressive. You want to kind of be on the front foot. You want to try and interrupt their combos by attacking. This is the strike hard, strike strike first, strike hard, no mercy with big groups. Because if you're very defensive, your structure is going to build up really quick. And then you're going to be really vulnerable. So with bosses, I would say defensive, big groups, aggressive. And then with smaller groups or mini bosses, you can kind of flow in between. Um, but that's generally my tip around whether or not you should be more defensive or aggressive. And that wraps up our section on defense, y'all. If you've made it this far, good for you. And we're gonna move on to attacking after this, but I hope you liked the video. Give that thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next section. And just remember, as soon as I start making a single dime from my YouTube videos, 50% of what I make, We'll go to a charity that we choose as a subscriber community. So all the more reason to spread the word, like, and subscribe.